All right, so to start, we are going to sketch our mountain glacier waterfall onto our canvas. So we're starting with a handy dandy little pencil. So what I like to do is first of all, I'm gonna find the halfway point on my canvas, which is gonna be right about here. Now from here, I am going to be drawing a diagonal line that is going to be um, the separation between my foreground and my background. So, I'm going to kind of just do this little angle thing, just lightly with your pencil. You don't have to engrave it into the canvas. Okay, so just this little line. I'm starting about the halfway point on my canvas. I'm going up like this. Create this little line. The next thing I want to do is I want to create the idea, oh, is my hat in the way? So sorry. Oh. Ow! Sorry. <laughs> All right. Going on okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create um, the space, <laughs> the space where the water line is going to be. So I'm going to come up probably about one to two inches here and create just a straight line across now. As straight as you can muster, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. Something remotely close to straight works fine. Okay, so now we're gonna put our glacier in. Now our glacier, we have like this one single peak coming coming up here in the center here. So I'm gonna start from about right here, almost at this line, but just maybe a half an inch up here. And my measurements could be completely off. Now mountains are bumpy. You don't necessarily want a straight line. So if you had that energy drink, now would be a good time to shake it up. Okay, so then I'm gonna come down, more bumps, and then I'm gonna just kind of bring it out until it disappears off the page. Okay, so we got a mountain. Now, what we wanna do is identify where our rocks are gonna be for our waterfall. So, what I do is I like to find the center point of my canvas um, right on this diagonal line, because I wanna center up my waterfall. I want my waterfall to be the center of the entire painting, focal point, so to speak. Okay, so here's my center point. Now from here, I'm gonna go about an inch this way, make a line, come back to the center point, go about an inch this way. Guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we know that the waterfall is gonna be in this space right here. So from here, now we're gonna get the idea of these rocks. Now, don't overthink it. Guys, just create some rough, a rough outline of your bumpy rocks to give you an idea. You want the inside of your waterfall to be jagged because it's cool. I kind of want my rocks to be like uh, showing up like in a diagonal. What is the word I'm looking for? You guys know what I mean. You'll, you'll know what I mean when I put it on here. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this side and I'm just gonna create like this jagged, this jagged edge over here. It's very uneven. And now, uh, this is another, this is a good point to make right here is, <clears throat> my paintings never really match when I do them repeatedly. So, if you're looking for this to match exactly the one in the gallery, well, it's gonna be a little bit different. They're different every time I do them. Okay, so I'm gonna do another jagged edge on this side. You don't really want a pattern, so try and break it up as much as you can. And I'm just being kind of messy here. Okay, so we got this thing going on here. Now, from here we're gonna create the idea of where our rocks are gonna be. Now, you may want less rocks. You may want big giant cliffs and boulders. It's kind of totally up to you. I'm going to create a division between these two spots here and create a rock that's kind of going up this direction. I'm also gonna create, say, another rock that comes down right here, okay? Now from here, I'm gonna create yet another division, because this is a good spot to make a rock, and then I'm gonna come down this way. Now I think there should be a rock in here, because we'll just make a funky one in here somewhere. Let's do this one. And just bring it down here 
and then make this come out this way. So ignore that funky line, like right there. Okay, <clears throat> got some rocks. It's kind of like connect the dots over here. All right, so now we could probably put another rock in here. And the more rocks you do, the more work you're creating for yourself. So don't go too crazy, unless you want to go crazy. That's fine too. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. I've got some rocks laid out. <clears throat> I'm gonna create a division here. Say this rock comes up and then comes down. Then maybe, let's see, I'm gonna, maybe this rock's gonna be a big long one like the original picture. Create another rock here. And let's put another one right in here. And then we'll make this one maybe come down here. And then this will be the base down where the water is. Just get creative, guys. We'll have another one over here. Okay. There, I have some rocks laid in. <clears throat> now, another thing I always like to say is be prepared to change. So, you may start painting this in and decide that you want more rocks or you want less rocks. Well, you do whatever you want. Make it work. Okay, so <clears throat> we have our waterfall laid out. We have our rocks laid out. We have our mountain laid out. Now, the only thing for us to do, we are gonna be putting some little rocks down here in the water. Um, although I'll probably end up painting over it, but just to give you an idea, put like a rock down here, just like so. Now we're gonna have some trees in the background. So if you wanna just kinda get an idea where those trees are gonna be, go ahead and lay those in there just to give you an idea. All right, now let's see, what else do we want? We are gonna have some bigger pine trees that are up close. They're gonna go in this area. Other than that, that's it. Our sketch is complete. It is time. Oh wait, there is that one more rock that kind of goes right in here. But I'll most likely paint over it. But just so you know, we're gonna put something in there. Okay, I think it's time to start mixing some paint and painting. So the first colors we're gonna start out with, we're gonna do the sky first. So we're gonna start with our cobalt blue which we're gonna be using a lot of, so go ahead and put a bit on there. And we're gonna be using our titanium white eventually when it comes out of the bottle. There it is. Okay. That's pretty much the sky right there, but I might as well put a little black on there too. We're gonna to use that to start shading in our rocks. And for the shadow water, which will make sense later. Okay, so to start, I'm actually going to pick up my half inch flat brush. I'm gonna get it wet, but I'm gonna wipe most of the water off onto my paper towel because I don't need a bunch of moisture on there. Okay, so I'm gonna start by making a light blue. I'm gonna grab a bunch of this white, and I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this blue. You can always add more, but you can't really take it away. I'm gonna go for a little bit more blue. Let's try that on the canvas. I think I want a little bit more blue. You guys do whatever you want, but I want a nice blue sky because we're gonna be adding some clouds. So I want it to be nice and blue so that my clouds show up. Okay, I'm just going to paint in my sky now. Just paint around your mountain. You don't have to perfectly paint around it. So you're gonna be adding those bumps back in when we paint in our mountain. And of course, I'm out of paint already. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more. Try and get as close to the color as possible, but it doesn't have to be exact. That's pretty close. Now 
this is just our kind of our first layer of paint so we're just trying to get it on there as best we can Now, if you want to paint around your edges, this would be a good time to think about that. If you want to wrap the painting around, you can wrap the blue around. Um, if you want to paint your edges black, well, you could do that pretty much at any time, but I usually suggest doing that kind of probably before you do your painting, just in case you go over the edges, but you can also do it after. Okay, I think that's pretty well covered. Okay, so now that I got my sky in, I'm gonna need to let that dry before I can come back and add clouds. So we are going to go ahead and mix a little bit darker color to paint in our water. So I already have the white and blue on the plate. I'm gonna add a bit more blue, a bit more white, and then I'm gonna grab a touch of this black. This is going to be our darker shadow water. Let me try this out here. That looks pretty good. I might go touch more black. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we have this darker color and now we're going to paint in where our waterfall is. I'm just going to paint the whole little thing in here. Now if you want to paint around this rock, you can. If you want to paint over the rock, just remember where you put it, or you can put it somewhere else when we come back with our darker color to do our shadow rocks. I'm going to mostly paint over it, but I'll leave a little hint here so I know where I had it. Okay, so once you get that area filled in, we're going to go ahead and continue with this darker color down below. And of course I didn't mix enough color, so I'm going to, you're going to be a pro at mixing if you follow me guys. You're going to be a pro. I'm going to come back and mix my white and my blue together again. This time I may mix a bit more. My sister always gets after me for that. Mix a lot, because you're using a lot, and I always mix a little. Okay. Doesn't have to be exact. We're just looking for a darker shadow color, but hey, that's pretty exact. So we're going to follow this over. Both sides. important thing is just making sure that your canvas is pretty well covered. This first layer is important for that. If you're seeing brush strokes, that's okay because we're going to be adding several layers over the top. So. see that okay it's weird I'm used to like painting on easel so this is kind of nice I like this mm -hmm. easels are good but sometimes it's easier to paint on a flat surface no I'm not gonna run out of paint I'm not gonna run out of paint I'm totally gonna run out of paint almost there I'm just making sure that 
my little rounded edges here. Because if I were you, I, I mean, I, I like to frame my painting, so I'm not painting the edges, but um, I just want to make sure that the paint wraps around enough that you won't see it. Now, if you have any big globs of paint, I suggest smoothing that out because otherwise it's going to take a millennium to dry. And we want to be able to add those layers. Get some thicker bits up here. Okay, so that's good for our first layer of water. So now we're going to move on and we're going to start painting in the shadows for our rocks. Now we're going to mix a very dark blue-gray. Now I have this spot right here. I might as well just keep mixing in the same. We're using the same three colors, so might as well just keep on going here. Add a little bit of white to that. I'm going to grab quite a bit of that black. Make a real dark color. It's more black than anything. I'm going to test this out real quick and see if that color is going to work. Now I want a nice crisp edge so I'm kind of wiping some of my paint off my brush. Just getting this nice crisp edge. Okay, so we're going to layer in. So now our shadows typically are going to be at the bottom of your rock. So we're going to layer these shadows in at the, the, the base of your rock. So for instance, this one here, I'm going to come around and follow that line. You don't need to come, you can come up about, come about that far, about halfway up your rock. Okay, and I'm going to have another shadow base right here. Important thing, you don't want to lose your lines for your rocks. I'm just painting in the bottom portion. We'll come back in and paint in the top portion of the rocks. But this is meant to be the bottom of the rock What's in shadow. Oops, there's a rock there. I almost missed that. Now this one's kind of going to be funky because, well, because there are two shadows. I'll just have to remember where that line is or add a new one. I'm not sure I like how that goes. Well, let's see. We'll paint it in and we'll see. I feel like there should be a little bit more of a bump there. See? Always be prepared to make changes. I think that was a mistake line. So we're just going to ignore it for the moment. Okay, I'm going to have to mix some more paint. Look at that. A little bit of black. I always kind of mix next to the color so that I can see the color and hopefully get pretty close to that color. That's pretty close. We're going to add in shadow down here. And as you can see, I'm using just the edge of my brush to get the straight line that I'm looking for. over here and do the same thing, adding shadows. And add these shadows in and then we'll probably take a little dry break. A shadow in here. Once again my shadows are going to connect but I have this little line here to tell me Add just a little bit more paint in. This one over here.
And we'll do one right here. This is definitely needs to be a shadow as well because it's at the back. So it might get a little confusing. But when we start laying in our other colors, it'll start. Your rocks will take form and it'll make sense. For now, we're just kind of putting in those base shadows. Okay, and then we got this big rock up here. So close. Gotta use a little bit more paint. <laughs> Don't mock me, sissy. She's she's here. I'm, I'm not by myself. Okay. See, I'm not real, just really loose with my brush for now. You know, we, there'll be a time for a little bit extra detail, but for now I'm just trying to keep it loose. Now there's this rock that's in here. I'm gonna put this guy back in. You can make him as big or as small as you want. He's gonna be all shadow, so I'm gonna do that. And this guy down here, same thing here. Put in our shadow. All right, so that's just a first layer. We got our shadows in on our rocks. Now I'm going to give it just a second and then we will be right back. All right, we are ready to continue. So we are gonna lay in the rest of our rocks, which is going to be a mid-tone. So we still have, I still have this color on my plate, which is still a little bit the dark color. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of white. A little bit more white. I want like a mid-tone, I'm gonna test this out. It's not bad, but I feel like I could go a little bit more gray with that. So add a little bit more black, a little bit more white. Okay, that'll be a decent, decent mid-tone here. So I'm going to use that to fill in the top portion of my rock here. I'm going to use my finger and kind of blend that. You don't have to, but I like to do that. Then I'm going to use, just come in and fill in the top part of my rock, pull that down into my shadow area. Now you can use your finger to blend or you can use this brush to kind of jaggedly bring that those shadows in. I mean, sorry, the highlight, the mid-tone, whatever you want to call it you don't want to completely cover your shadow but you can bring it down enough to where it kind of looks like it's all over the place it just kind of looks more rocky <laughs> I'm gonna use my flat of my brush again to come up and create this edge now this really should be a dark space so realizing that now I'm gonna leave it and come back with my darker color to kind of fill that in so I feel like that should be a highlight, that should be a, a shadow. So I see that I have a rock that comes down right in here. So I'm gonna kind of create that and bring that in. And just real lightly with, I almost said toothbrush, but it's not a toothbrush, it's a paintbrush. And then over here, we have another rock that's meeting now. These might just become one big rock, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. When we do our other highlight, I can choose to add in this line. In fact, I can kind of round it out so I remember where it was. Okay, just feather touch there. And I'm going to come up here and create this 
top part of this rock. Add just a touch more white to that. Bring that up. And a little bit more white, a little bit more black, a little bit more of that blue mixed in there. Just kind of trying to come up with a color that's close to. Doesn't have to be exact. Rocks are not all usually the same color, so. Fill in that top portion. And then lightly feather the color down into the rock there. I'm gonna come over here, do the same thing. I feel like I'm getting darker and darker here. Add a little bit more white. Add that in. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So obviously I'm going to have to mix more paint. So <laughs> grab a little white, grab the black, a touch of the blue. I've used all the colors here. I'm going to grab a little bit more black, a little bit more black, and a touch of the blue. You can always lighten it up a bit. but. I'm going to be somewhat close. So let's see, does that match or am I I'm quite a bit lighter? So I'm going to grab a little bit more black. <clears throat> and the blue until I get a little bit closer. That's closer. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Let's see, we'll start up here at the top. Follow the top part of the rock, bring it down into the shadow, and then very lightly feather touch and just bring it down in some areas. Okay, same thing on this side. Sure this was the beginning of a rock here. It looks like I had one here. See, I'm getting all confused by my rocks. You can just put them in wherever you want. I'm going to add a highlight here. I don't know if that was a rock, but it is now. We're going to add this back here. I feel like I need to go just a touch darker. Too light. Black. That's better. If we got to come back in and add a little bit more shadow because we got too carried away with our highlights, that's okay. I do it all the time. Now I'm going to come up here and find the top part of this rock. And follow that down. I feel like this rock needs to come out here a little bit more. Just lightly feathering. I'm very light with my brush. Now, if you're having trouble and you're getting globs of paint, it could be because you have too much paint on your brush. So when you're doing this, see this got real light over here, I'm going to have to fix that. When you're doing this, you can wipe your brush off on your paper towel and then come back and you kind of get this dry brush blended look. So if you're having trouble with that blend, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just not going to be. but. Um, now I'm going to have to add a little bit more of the darker component back in over here 
because I got carried away. I'm going to add this in for this rock. Okay, so I kind of get that area filled in. You can wipe your brush off and then come and lightly pull that down. And it just kind of blends in a little bit. Got just a couple more rocks here. And just a little bit more black, a little bit more white, touch of the blue. Okay, and come back and I'm going to put this rock right here. Not sure if that's where it was before, but it's going to be there now. Fill this area in. This is my other rock. Last one. wipe my brush off and I'm going to come back and gently blend this in very lightly with my brush. Okay, so we have the beginning of our rocks up here. Now we're also going to want to carry this color down to the top part of this rock. And in this part here Fill in that area. Bring this down this edge here. And then I'm going to wipe my brush. Come back and lightly blend with a feather touch. So you get kind of a cool texture going on on the bottom of your rock. Now, I got to fill this area in with a darker color. So that was do that right over here. I'm going to go blue with the black, make that darker color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. Too much white. Look what I did. Grab some more black. It's pretty close. We're going to test it out here. It looks pretty good. I'm going to fill that little triangle in because it just doesn't make sense that it would be a highlight. Okay, now that I've got the darker color remixed on my plate, I can come back. This is about the only spot where I feel like I got just a touch too carried away here. A little bit more black to that. Add in some of those darker components. Okay, maybe a little bit more right here. Just nice and loose. Okay, so we have our shadows and midtones. There's a little spot right here I really want to cover. There we go. Okay, so for the most part, that's a good start for our rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off. What we're going to do next is go ahead and move up to our glacier and we're going to add in our first layer, which is going to be very similar to the color that we already have. So we have this mid-tone gray going on here. We're going to add a little bit of white to that. Now remember, we are, we are still just using these three colors. We will have more colors to add in when we get to our final highlights on the rocks. We'll be using some burnt sienna. But right now we're just mixing three different colors to come up with this. Now I added in a little bit more white. I'm going to add in a little bit more blue. I really am not going to know until I put it on here to see because I want it to be a little bit lighter than that. It's pretty close. I'm going to add just a touch more white. And a touch more blue. Now the blue kind of makes it seem like it's far away, which is kind of what I want. 
That's pretty good for a first layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and you remember where your lines are. We'll fill that in. Now you're filling this whole peak in. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit more of this color because I'm going to be covering this whole peak. I want to do it while I have this color here. A little bit more black. So it's just white, a little bit of blue, and a touch of black to it. A little bit more blue. If it's just too gray and something's missing, add a little bit more blue. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to pull this all the way out to there. I'm going to come up and remember, bumpy. Mountains aren't usually straight. I'm going to bring this all the way down. I know we got these trees there, but we're going to go ahead and paint over that for now. We want to cover this whole canvas in a first layer of paint. That's what we're doing. Got a little bit of extra color in there. That's all right. Oops. It's because I'm running out and I'm getting desperate, so I'm just throwing more in there. <laughs> ah. All right, we spread it around. We made it look right. Okay, so our mountain is covered. So we have our first layer on our mountain. That's going to need to dry before we can add any highlights to it. So. Um, our rocks are still a little bit wet, so I'm going to let that be. I think what we'll do now is maybe move on to some clouds. Um, so for that, I'm going to switch to a different brush. Well, maybe I won't. Actually, I think I'm going to stick with the same brush. Sorry guys, I'm indecisive. We're going to stick with the half inch flat. You can use just about any brush for this. But we're going to start out and try the half inch flat and see how we do. Now, you want to make sure and rinse your brush really thoroughly. Um, and then I'm going to dry it off really good. I want this to be pretty much dry, dry. Because we're going to use a technique called dry brushing to add our clouds in. So nice dry brush. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of this white and move it to a different spot. Now I have very little on my brush. Very, very little. Okay, so I'm gonna even wipe a little bit off there and we'll see how this goes. Now I'm gonna add a little bit. Now I'm gonna do this dab and scrub thing. <laughs> There's not really any real professional name for that. I just dab a little of this paint on there and scrub it around. Now I'm gonna scrub it around to kind of create this Little circles, doing circles here to create the idea of these clouds. Add some clouds. I can really get carried away with this step. I'll try not to because I like clouds. I'm going to add a little bit more to this side. Now, if you get too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off. Come back, grab just a little bit. And if you get like a lot of paint on there and you don't panic, don't freak out. Just move it around. Scrub it around. Move it around. Do some 
some circles. And make sure we are going to be doing more layers in our mountain. So if you go into your mountain a little bit, it's okay. We're going to do some clouds maybe disappearing right behind the mountain. Very little paint. Scrubbing it on there. You can also use a really old bristly brush to do this. They work great for this sort of thing. Um, but honestly, any brush will work. Just sometimes you, when you're, if you're scrubbing and you're scrubbing too hard, you can kind of damage a brush. So just don't go too crazy. <laughs> See how that creates an idea of some nice clouds in the sky. Now you can add as much as you want. I'll put some more up here. Now we are going to have some bigger pine trees over here. So if you want to, or at least one. So I'm going to put more clouds. Add another little bit here. Maybe a little bit thicker. Spread it around real good. Okay, we got some clouds going on there. Now if you see a couple areas where you're like, you know, that should be brighter, go ahead and dab that on there and scrub it around a little bit. I think we should have a highlight in this cloud right about here. I'm going to add a little bit more there. Scrub it around a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Okay, we have clouds. All right, so our rocks dry yet? We're getting close. So I think what we'll do is we're going to come down here. We'll add another layer to our rocks. So for this, let's go ahead and put some burnt sienna on our plate, which is coming at me. Perfect. Okay, so now I am actually, do we have a quarter inch flat around here, sis? I can find one. Oh, wait, here's one. Never mind. Okay, so I'm actually going to switch to this quarter inch flat for this. I want a little bit more control. Okay, so I'm just going to wet it down in the water. I'm going to wipe most of the water off here. Now, I'm going to find a oops, clean spot here. <clears throat> and we're going to create kind of a brown highlight color to go on our rocks. I keep getting water all over this. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see here. I don't know that I, I'm going to start with white now that I dipped my brush in the black. Just ignore that. So we're going to want a little bit of black, but we don't want too much, I don't think. So then we're going to do a little bit of white. I'm going to grab a little bit of this burnt sienna. Okay, now we want to add a little bit of this either blue, we can go blue from here, or you can just grab a little bit of this other color there. It's going to be a little bit of a mix. Add a little bit more burnt sienna. A feel like that might be pretty close. We might want to add just a touch more black to that. This isn't going to be our final highlight by any means. It's going to be kind of a first highlight. Now I'm going to put it on here and see what it looks like. I've cut it got, is that even on that? Oh geez guys, I'm sorry. My plate moved on me. How about I just mix that again so you guys can see it. <laughs> it's all up there in the corner and I'm just like, they're probably like, move your plate! I could hear you guys yelling at me. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that again so you guys can see it. All right, so we're going to start with a little bit of white. In fact, oh God, <laughs> you're laughing, but you know it's true. They were yelling at me. I could tell. Yeah. So I'm going to take a little bit of this white. See, it's important to look up at the actual camera occasionally. It is. So I'm going to grab the white, grab a little bit more of this burnt sienna. I'm going to grab a touch of black. Just a little bit of, going for a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Now I'm going to grab some blue, just a touch of blue, and I'm going to mix that in. Okay, now 
let's just check this out and see how we're doing. All right, so I'm just this this is a highlight color, so we're going to basically stick to the top portion of the rock. Now I'm using my flat edge to kind of come around. And we don't want the whole rock to be covered. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. I'm going to round out this edge. Whatever your light, my light source is going to be coming from this direction. So I want to make sure, or maybe this direction. I don't know really yet. We'll find out. <laughs> but I want to pull this highlight down just a little bit into the rock. As you can see, I'm not using, I'm just barely kind of just dabbing this on there, here and there. And as you see, it kind of creates this textured look. Now I've got another rock over here, so I'm going to kind of bring this down here to create the edge of that rock. You do the same thing here. Pull it down, just kind of doing this dab and pull down into the rock. <clears throat> Whoa, I got a lot of white on that one. All right. Pull this down. Basically going to be doing kind of the same thing on these edges. Now I'm using, I'm just basically, I don't have a ton of paint on here, but I'm just kind of dabbing it on there and pulling it down. Dab and pull down. Okay, we're going to, rocks are hard, hard guys, I'm just saying. They're not the easiest thing. So the more abstract you keep it, the less detail and just kind of loose. I find it works better. If you try to get real detailed with rocks, a lot of times it just gets frustrating. Okay, we're gonna come over here, do the same thing. creating because rocks are <clears throat> have so many different tones in them we could add purple to the rock and it would make sense <laughs> especially Montana rocks so many different colors so honestly if you're feeling creative and you want to add some different tones to your rocks be my guest just make sure you send me a picture so I can see what it looks like Okay, so now as you can see, I've basically run out of paint again. So I'm going to remix it. See, if you missed it the first and the second time, you get to see it for the third time. I do this for a reason. <laughs> okay, so I've got some white. I'm gonna grab some more burnt sienna. I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue which you probably can't see me reaching for that, but there's blue up there. And I got two blue. I'm gonna grab some more burnt sienna. That's pretty close. It's closer. We'll just go with, we're gonna go with it's closer. A little bit more burnt sienna. Okay. A little bit more. <laughs> okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, now I don't like I, I'm just adding a little bit of paint to my brush. Now I'm gonna come back over here, scoop my chair over. We're gonna start at the top of this rock. We're gonna do the same thing.
real loose, real gentle. Just pull that color a little bit down in some areas. As you can see, I'm skipping some areas and leaving some spots. Same thing here. I feel like that needs to be just a touch darker, guys. Hmm. Is this rock in front or me? I'm going to go with in front. And again, if you're like getting globs of paint, you wipe your brush off and come back. Secret to dry brushing is very little paint. Oh, got something funky going on here. I think this is a rock. So let's go ahead and make that known. This is a rock. I don't particularly care for this little thing going on here, so I might just take some of this and dry brush it down in. Add a little bit of texture to the base part of that. Okay. The rocks are kind of the hardest part, guys. I wouldn't say hard, I would say time consuming. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here. Let's do this one, because I believe there's a rock here. colors are a little bit different in this painting versus I think the one that's in the gallery but these are more like I said I never do when you do the paintings over and over again you, you just tend to never do them well I do I don't know about anybody else I never do them the same way every time so this one is a little bit different but it's more realistic actually as far as the colors go Okay, now don't forget about this guy down here. You don't need to worry about adding highlights to this guy because we're going to be covering him in water. So, just come down here and we'll add some highlights to this guy. Kind of scrubbing just like I did the clouds. Okay, looks all rocky and stuff. So now, aside from maybe one final highlight, which I haven't really decided on because that might be plenty, I kind of like them just as they are, but we may add just a little bit of light just to, just to the edges of the rocks that are out, uh, you know, facing out. So, but for now, let's just let that be. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna come up and we're gonna add some highlights to our glacier. I'm gonna switch back. Am I? Yeah. No. Actually, I'm going to keep this brush because I like it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rinse it, though. So I'm going to move back to this plate and set this one out of the way. Now, this is the color that we used for our glacier, which was blue and white and a little bit of black. So I'm going for basically this color, but I'm going to go a touch lighter. So. I'm going to grab some blue, should probably grab more than, make sure I have more than enough, some white, 
See, then, then my luck is I'll grab too much, which is exactly what I did. Grabbed way too much blue. I should have started with white. Um, so here we go. We got this blue-white thing going on over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. I'm trying to kind of get the same tone that I have here on the plate, which I'm pretty close. So now I'm gonna add a bit more white because I want to lighten it up. So we got this light blue-gray going on. Now I'm gonna test this up here and see how that's gonna look. Now I'm gonna wipe my brush because I don't want a ton of ton of paint on there. Okay, so my light source is kind of off in this direction, so I'm gonna be lighting up this side of my glacier. So I'm gonna start on just this edge. That's pretty good for a first highlight. So I'm gonna start on this edge, and I'm using the edge of my brush, bringing that down, and then I'm gonna bring my brush down kind of randomly, kind of like the clouds, but a little bit more um, specific as far as I want to show that these are like highlights on the side of the gl cliff, glacier, cliff, mountain, whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this as sporadic as possible. I'm gonna actually add a little bit more white to that because I'm afraid you guys can't see that very good. A little bit more white. Wipe it off. Okay, so let's try that again. Okay, that's a little bit brighter. So, sporadic. And I'm kind of doing this angle. I have my brush not this way, not this way, but at an angle. Creating the idea of this edge of my glacier. Now I want to mainly focus on the edge of my glacier here. Bring that down. Okay, and actually I'm gonna, <laughs> I gotta take a quick break guys. I will be right back. You won't notice the difference, so hang on. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry guys, there is a reason for that. I can't, my, uh, the clips, you guys don't really, I'm sure you don't care, but the clips on the camera have to be sort of short. I get into it and then I forget that I need to pause in between clips, anyways. So, that's the reason for that. If I all of a sudden have to pause for a second, then you'll know why. So, I'm continuing with my highlights, and I'm just trying to be sporadic. Now, what I like to do a lot is anywhere where I see a little bit of canvas, I will kind of use this highlight to kind of cover that area. Pull that down into that area. See, I'm just kind of creating the, this idea that there is a highlight here. I'm bringing it all the way down. Now we're going to come back and we're going to add a bit more light to this, to this highlight. Somehow it seems to have gotten a little bit lighter on me, but I think that's just because it's drying. It always dries a little bit darker. Okay, so now I've got this. It's totally up to you how you guys want to do it, but I want to kind of create like there's a, a ledge here that's got light hitting it. So I'm going to have a shadow side, but I want to make sure and have plenty of light coming down on this side because it's pretty eye catching and cool. Create another ledge here. See how I'm doing that? And maybe add a little bit more in here. And then just a little ledge here. And follow this down. Now we're going to be adding some trees here in the background. I'm really trying not to think about it because the more I think about things, then they end up becoming a pattern. Just something that I don't want to do. Okay, so now I've got this kind of first layer of highlight going on. I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a touch more white to that highlight. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do less of it, just kinda on the edge here. So I want a little bit more white and a little bit more blue. White. My highlight is reflecting the blue sky. That's what I'm doing here. Wipe my brush off. Okay. So it seems a little gray. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. See, this is what happens when you mix too much plate or paint. Okay. I'm happy with that. Probably not, but we're gonna try it anyway. totally went off. We're going to make a little cliff there because I accidentally put that there. Okay, now I'm just going to add just to the edge of where my other highlights are. Not everywhere. Coming along this edge, I'm using that flat edge of my brush to kind of follow that down. I'm going to make sure and do it on this side. Break it up a little bit. Now when we do our water, we'll come back with a final kind of bright highlight up here. But for now, I think this is going to do. We can move on to our trees in the background, as well as our pine tree up front. Okay. All right, that's pretty good for highlights. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. <clears throat> now I'm gonna grab some green some green oxide here. Now I'm going to have to move some plates around so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Add a little green to my plate. Okay. Now what we want to make is a distant green color that is kind of, when you're looking at your trees way off in the distance, they're a little bit lighter in color versus your trees that are going to be close to you. I'm going to switch back to my half inch flat because it's kind of the perfect size to make these zigzag trees. I'm gonna wipe that off real good. Now, I'm going to grab some of this green, and then I'm actually gonna grab, which you can't see, a little bit of this blue. Just a little tiny bit. Now I'm gonna grab some white, and mix that in. A little bit more white. and a touch of this black. It's a weird color. I think it's going to work. So let's try it. I'm going to try it on here. I'm just going to kind of put it on there. That's real close, but I think we need a little bit more black. A little bit darker. We want that little bit of blue in it too, but also the little bit of green. I always add blue to anything that I want to be at a distance. Okay, that's a good color. All right, so now to do this, I'm gonna have to get some room here. For zigzag trees, there's a cool little trick that you can do. Now I'm gonna hold my flat brush this direction. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on one end and I'm gonna do this zigzaggy thing here. See how that looks like trees off in the distance? It's kind of like a heart monitor machine. Um, what else do we call it, sis? A seismograph. seismograph. I forget that every time. If you come down into your rocks a little bit, it's okay. We're going to add one final highlight to that. Now I'm just coming along just the very base of that mountain there. that color in. We may have to do a second coat 
green, this green is really pretty translucent, so. Which kind of is cool because it looks like your trees are kind of faded off in the distance. But it can be hard to get them to show up. So I'm going to add a little bit more black, a little bit more blue. Just because I'm running out. And I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to do the whole length of my canvas here. Now if you want to make your trees a little bit taller on this edge, you can do that. Make them a little bit taller. I'm going to come back and a little bit more there. Okay. So that's pretty good for that first layer. Like I said, it's a little translucent, so we may have to add a quick second layer, but it dries pretty quickly. So I'm going to let that be for now. Um, next thing I'm going to do is rinse my brush. We're going to add some highlights to our water. So you're going to want a pretty clean space. Well, let's see what I got going on over here. We can actually use some of these colors that we have mixed already for our glacier. But because I don't want to confuse you, we'll remix right in this spot right here so you guys can see. Okay, so we are going to mix our first highlight color for our water. Um, I'm going to stick with this half inch flat brush. So I'm going to rinse it, dry it real good. Don't really want any green in our water. You can see where this is still a little bit damp. So we're just going to kind of let that be for a sec. Now we're going to come over here. We want a color that's a touch lighter than what we got on the, or on the canvas right here. Now if you remember, this was blue um, and white with a little bit of black. So I'm going to grab this blue and white combination that I have right here and add a little black to it. I'm trying to get somewhat close to this color, which I think that's pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty close. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. That little bit of white. A little bit more white. Kind of get a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm gonna look and see here. Let's put this on there. That's pretty good. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and start down here because we want our trees to dry a little bit better. Now, this is gonna be kind of like a dab. We're gonna be just kind of dabbing this on. Here at the base of this waterfall, it's gonna be kind of frothy. Um, so we're going to kind of make this frothy here, dabbing it at the base of these rocks. I'm going to add a little bit more white to that. I feel like you guys can't see that, but you probably can. It's just the light. Okay, so I'm just going to keep dabbing this. We'll bring this down the waterfall too, but for now we're just going to dab it here at the base. And we're going to create this idea of frothy water. Kind of coming up here at the bottom. All right, frothy, frothy, frothy. Now, once you kind of get the froth going on there, what you can do is kind of create these places where you get a little bit of a ripple here. Now I think I'm going to have to mix a little bit more paint here. So I'm just grabbing some of these blues and whites that I've got here and I'm just going to adjust according to how light I need it. Touch this black. Now, I think we're pretty close, but let's just check. Yeah, we're pretty close. So again, I'm kind of going to tip this sideways because I want it to look more frothy. We'll be adding more layers, so 
Don't worry, you can get more frothy with the next layer. Oh, I cracked myself up. Okay, so we've got this little bit of frothiness going on in there. Now I'm gonna create this idea that the water kind of comes out a little bit further. Maybe add some some currents in the water. And I'm just gonna do this just gently side to side, little areas that are a little bit more kind of all the way across. We'll come back and create our light in the water here. Um, with a high with a lighter highlight. But for now we're just gonna kinda do this. Just create movement. That's what I'm looking for. Movement in the water. And then we definitely want to have a little movement right at the base of this rock. Movement. I keep repeating the word because I think it's a good word. <laughs> Remember movement. Okay, so we've got some movement in the water. Now what I want to do is create some of our waterfall coming down. So, because it looks like our trees are pretty dry up there, I'm going to start right here at the top. Now there's a, definitely a specific way of doing this. So first I'm going to dab on a little bit of this um, frothiness at the top. Now I'm going to gently, I don't have a ton of paint on my brush, so I'm going to position it here and I'm going to lightly pull it down and lift off. Okay. Now I'm going to be turning my brush this way. You see how it gives it this, this look of water falling? And then keeping it this way. Now I want it to hit this rock. So we're going to come down and kind of dab a little bit right on the top of this rock. And then we're going to pull it gently down the edge here. Turn it sideways maybe. Pull that down. Here we're going to pull some water down. I'm going back and forth from this to this. When I want it to be skinnier, I do it this way. Now I've got some funky colors going on in here, so I might have to come back. Maybe the water comes down and kind of goes right over the top of that rock. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Create a little bit of froth and pull that down. it down to hit on top of this rock and imagine you're hitting and then you're falling down. Now this is just the first highlight. We're going to add more. Maybe it hits right there and comes down. Okay, so now we kind of have the idea of the motion of our waterfall. I want to kind of create where we have like two bits coming down where there's just kind of a center right there. Okay, so now next we're going to come back up here and we're going to do a second layer quick on our trees. So we can get our big pine tree in. So I'm gonna let that be for a minute. Come over here, rinse my brush off. This is the color I'm aiming for. So I'm gonna grab some green. There's a little bit of white and blue in there, so I'm gonna grab both of those. And I'll grab some black. Just get as close to the color as you can. I'm going to grab a little bit more blue, set it to the side there, add a little bit, a little bit more green. That's pretty close. 
And I have a little bit too much water in my brush, so I'm going to wipe that off a little bit. Come back and grab some of that paint. Now, same thing we did earlier. Except for, I think I need a little bit more black. Okay. I'm just going to go right back over it. Add a little more green to that. Just trying to match it as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe your trees don't even need a second layer. Mine do. Just a wee bit. Okay. I didn't even do it everywhere. Just a little bit here and there. Just to kind of thicken it up. Okay, so we have our trees in the background. So now what we're going to do, and we're going to mix a highlight and come back and hit that with a highlight. But first we're going to put in our larger pine trees here. So for that we're going to want quite a bit darker green. So I'm going to grab some of this black and mix it in. Add a little bit more green to that and probably a touch of this white. Okay, now I'm going to get the idea where I want to put it. So I think I'm going to do, I like the idea of having one large one and then maybe a small one behind it. So I'm going to start with my large one first. Now I'm just going to do a straight line to give me an idea where I'm putting it. Okay, and then I think the smaller one's going to be right about here. Okay, now because the smaller one's going to be in the background, I'm going to start with that one first. And what I do is I use, I, you can switch to a smaller brush, um, might be easier, but I like to use the larger brush because as I move down the tree I can get bigger and bigger. Now I start with just the corner of my brush and I kind of dab it create this idea of the top of the tree just by dabbing it Then, as I move down the tree I get a little bit wider so do go skinny first then you can add to it and make it wider so I'm just using just the corner and it just kind of adds the actual pine tree look of the trees. It's kind of my favorite way to create pine trees. Bring it all the way down. Now I can already see that I could go a little bit wider with it. So I'm going to grab some more paint, come back up, kind of redo it and go just a little bit wider where I think it should be wider. Bring it down a little bit fuller here at the base. Make sure it's nice and filled in there in the center. Okay, there's one pine tree down. Now I'm going to add in my big one. So grab a little bit more paint here. Oops, green. You can add a little blue to it, it's okay. <laughs> a little bit of white. You just want a darker color. And I'm going to start, do the same thing. Start at the top, just at the corner of my brush, and I'm going to dab. Keeping it real skinny at first. We have company. Just keeping it skinny. And pretty soon you can kind of dab down. So I'm angling my brush to angle it for the pine tree boughs. Yes, a portion of this tree is going to cover my little tree. That's okay. <sighs> it makes all sorts of noise. There we go. I'll hold it down a little bit better. Just go 
going to make sure that that line, the original line, is mostly covered up there. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to add just to the top of this rock, I'm going to add kind of this, this is like the first layer of shadow grass. I'm just going to pull this out on the rock to where it's maybe a little bit taller in here. I'm just dabbing it on there. This is just kind of a first layer. Don't want to cover up all of your rock, just kind of right at the top. Maybe it follows this area down here just a little bit. Okay, so we got that first layer on. So now what we want to do is we want to create our mid-tone. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of this white. Come over here, mix it with a little bit of that black. But mainly I want to get some more green in there. Create this darker, this mid-tone. Okay, so I have a mid-tone for my tree. Now what I want to do is I want to add these highlights to my tree. Now I'm just going to do just a little bit here and there. I'm going to dab it on both sides. Come back and forth across. See I'm dabbing it on there using just the corner of my brush. To the sides, down the middle, wherever there would be boughs for the tree. Remember, this one is kind of in front of the little guy, so we want to add all the way down. Okay, and do the same thing in the back. The little guy, just very little, make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Now we're going to also do that to our grass here on the front. Got a little bit too much paint on there. Okay, and I'm just going to dab this just on the top of where we put the other grass. Kind of blends in. We'll come back over with a better highlight here. More, you will add some yellow to it, make it nice and bright. Follow that down just to the top. Now, we need, we definitely need to brighten some things up here on this tree. Um, but I think we're going to have to, we're going to let that dry for a few. And then what we'll do is we'll come back with our final highlights to our tree and our grass. For now, we're going to come down, we're going to switch back to our water. So go ahead and rinse your brush real thoroughly. Now, if I'm going too fast for you guys, you can obviously pause me at any time. I'm going to need a little bit more clean white on my plate here. Okay, so now we want to create yet another highlight color for our water. So I'm going to grab some of this white and mix in some of this blue. use a bit of it so and just a touch of this black let's see what this looks like I'm wiping my brush off I'm gonna grab just a little bit here see yeah it looks pretty good it's nice and bright okay so we got more froth here at the top and then I'm going to position my brush, gently pull it down. Same thing over here, pull it down. And then turn it sideways so that it hits the top of your rock here. Creates a little bit more froth. And then pull it down. Very lightly. 
I'm going to pull this all the way down and then let it go. Now I'm going to do it sideways. I'm going to separate it out here, put a little bit more of it on this side. Now I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Some froth. This is a, this waterfall is moving. Pull it down, pull it down. Turn it sideways and pull it down. Just landing on top of my rock and then pulling it down. I wonder, has anybody gone rogue yet? <laughs> Started adding this and that. I love it when you guys go rogue. Okay, I'm also going to add some froth down here at the bottom where it's hidden. I'll pull that out. It's a pretty wild waterfall, so we're just going to make sure it's nice and frothy down here at the bottom. Maybe even add a second layer of froth here. And then we're going to add in some more of those currents, those movements in the water. Not quite as many. And I'd mostly kind of like to keep them in this area. Very gentle about how I'm adding them in there. Come back and add a little bit more movement down here. It's kind of wherever you think it needs to go. We'll come back and add a final highlight down here to kind of bring it all together. For the most part, it's looking pretty dang good. Okay. So now our tree should be dry. So we're gonna leave this. We'll come back to it in just a second with a final highlight. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. Bring this plate back in. Now we're gonna add a little bit of yellow. Just a little bit. We really don't need much yellow. Now what I want to create is a nice, nice highlight um, that'll go in on the edges of this tree. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of green and add a little bit of this white to it. And then some yellow. Makes a nice bright green. I like that. Gee, that might be too bright. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to wipe my brush off because I don't want a ton of paint on there. I just want a little bit. And I'm going to test this out. Now I'm going to have my light kind of hitting this edge of the tree for the most part. So same deal, just going to use the edge of my brush to create this highlight. I think we need a little bit more white. Touch that yellow. Wipe it off again. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to dab it on the edge of this tree. Now, I'm mainly sticking to the one side because I'm imagining that I got a lot of 
I like coming from that side. You guys can go as bright as you want. And a little bit more there. Okay, so now on the back of this tree here, this tree, this little guy back here is just going to get it mainly right up here on this edge. Because the rest of it kind of gets hidden. Now, I'm going to come out just a little ways because I don't want to put my highlight oops, in the shadow. Well, I guess that's a good spot to start. So I'm imagining there's a little bit of a shadow here. And now I'm going to dab on some of this highlight for where this grass is. I'm do the same thing over here on this side. Just on top where this grass is. Just dab it on there. I don't know, I might actually dull that down just a bit. I feel like that's a little too bright for right there. bit of green to that. There we go. That's a little bit more doable. Okay. Now this is the grass on the rock. So if you're wondering what this is, it's grass on the rock. Dull this down a little bit here. Let's go back over that a little bit. Okay. So we got this grass going on there, and I think we're going to add a little bit of this grass right here in front. Like there's a little bit of a hill you know, right here. This is a little bit less bright, so I'll just bring that all the way over actually. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to come back. I've got a little bit of this darker green here. I'm going to grab some of that and come back at the base of this and kind of dull that out just a little bit in there. Just a little bit. Add some different colors to it. Okay, I feel a little better about that. I'll show you something else you can actually do too to create. See how I'm just kind of going up to create the idea that there's this grass here. I'll show you another little trick. It's with the detail brush. I'm going to grab my detail brush here, or a round. This is a round number two, I believe. No, this is an eight. So this is a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to wet it down, wipe it off. I'm going to grab just a little bit of this, this color here. I don't want too bright. I'm very gently going to create the idea of grass. Just kind of coming up here and there all sorts of different directions. You can do this with your flat as well. Just gives a little bit more texture. So your grass is kind of hanging up over the edge there. Okay, now the only other thing I want to do is where we can see these trees. I'd like to add just a touch of a highlight to them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this color. And I'm just going to very lightly just tab this color in, in a couple spots. So it looks like there's a little bit of a highlight to these trees back there at a distance. Okay. All right, I'm liking that so far. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's see here. The only thing I really want to do is add the last little layer of 
highlight to the waterfall. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to switch back to this plate here. This is my water color from before. I'm going to grab a bunch of white and mix that in. I don't really want straight white. I just want a really bright bluish white. Now I'm going to do some froth here at the top. Same concept. If I can get that a little bit better here. Same concept. Froth. And then pull it down. Now this time I'm probably just not going to pull it all the way. I'm going to do a little bit. Every time I do a highlight, I do a little bit less. A little bit less. Froth. And then pull it down. Don't forget this little guy here. Put some froth on there. Pull it down. It's hitting the rock and then it's coming off. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit down here as well. Some more froth. Turn my brush sideways to kind of dab it so you get a little bit, you don't get a straight edge. Create some more froth. Okay. Now, instead of going everywhere, I'm going to kind of keep this to this one little area. It creates the idea that the light is reflecting in the water in this one little spot here. Draws the eye in. It's interesting, we'll just say that. Okay, now I might add just a little tiny bit of this color up here to this mountain. Just to make just a little bit more of a highlight up there. I don't want it to blend in. Guys, I think we're kind of done. Oh, wait. Oh, let's add. Sorry. Let's do a little tiny bit more down here, just where this rock is. There we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think we're officially, we're officially done. I think it looks really good. Aside from signing your name, you have to sign your name. So, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna switch over to this little detail brush. And let's see what color we'll do. We'll do a blue gray, darker blue gray down here. Is that not gonna be go a little bit darker? I don't want it to be obvious, but I don't want it not to be seen. Now this is a little bit bigger than a detail brush, so hopefully you've got something a little bit smaller. Whoops. There we go. There's a signature. Now, if this is the only thing that I'm looking at and seeing that I kind of want to add, it's just one little tiny little bit more highlight to my rock. Now I have this blue gray here. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this burnt sienna and add that in there. Makes it a brighter little color here. I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna and a little bit more white to that. Okay, and I've still got this smaller round. 
I'm just going to add just this little bit of highlight here and then maybe right along this edge. And then maybe right along this edge. Here maybe. You guys can get as carried away with this as you want. Wherever you imagine that the light might be hitting the rocks. Just add a little bit of highlight. Okay, guys. That's it. Oh, wait. No, forget about this guy. Sorry, my bad. Shh. <laughs> okay, I always forget about this little guy down here. Sorry. Okay, so I've got some light. All right, guys, that is officially it. We are finished. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed and we would love to see your painting. So please share it with us on our Creative Canvas Facebook page. Um, join our Creative Canvas community. Lots of videos to come. Um, make sure you subscribe to our channel.